I'm not really sure what to make of this mess. So. Maybe, maybe the Lord will open up an opportunity for me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with this brother. I don't understand this, man. man up all right so look man I don't know what that's about right now so uh, man you know when you come to New York man you don't know what you're gonna you don't know what you're gonna see man you just don't know all right so I made it past that I made it through that subway thank God for that so I did manage to make it I think I'm in Times Square man so kind of looks that way Man, come on to New York City, man, and, and enjoy yourself, man. You know, a lot, many of you probably don't take, spend, you, you probably don't stay too far away from New York. You might stay about 200 miles, maybe 300 miles, 400 miles. People on the East Coast over in Youngstown, Columbus. I think Youngstown, you could probably get on the road, man. You could be, I think it's like a little over 300 and something miles to get to New York City. And so, enjoy, you know, enjoy your country. Enjoy your freedoms while you still got them, man. I'm just telling you that because you got a group that wants to take over. They want to implement socialism. They want to implement communism and all this whole crazy stuff, you know. So Marxism is trying to gain inroad into this nation. And they want to take all these freedoms away from you. Now, how are you going to tell me that you oppressed living in this country, this beautiful country? You know, man, who holding you down? Who exactly holding you down? Hey, officer, how you doing? All right, thanks for your service. I'm proud of these guys, <laughs> and so, and I appreciate, and I stand with the police. You know, if you don't, if you one of those people that's woke and all this, so you know what? If you 50 years old, I don't, you know, it's a sh you shouldn't be talking about. I hate the police, and you 50 and 60 and 70 years old, 80 years old, talking about defunding the police. So if somebody kick your door in, who you gonna call? Cause you, if you're 80 years, you 70 years old, 80 years old, who exactly are you gonna call to protect you? If one of these young punks kick your door in and try to take over, and y'all talking about we hate the police, f the police, because you got a few bad apples in the crowd. Now I've been walking around here, I've been talk, have, I've been talking with police officers and uh, asking them questions and, and they've been giving me helpful information on how to you know navigate my way around New York City and it's been a very pleasant experience and so don't be don't get into the don't get caught up into the hype and believe in that old talking snake media and some of you some of us is too old for that mess we too old for that you know Romans chapter 13 verse 1 through 7 talks about government it talks about law enforcement you're supposed to respect law enforcement that way we can have a civilized society God institution he, he instituted government and that's in Romans chapter 13 verse 1 through 7 I believe and so some, some of us is too old man I, it's people in my age group it's people in our age group talking about you know after the police you know back in the day what we used to roll with NWA we rode with NWA back in the, you know, when I was in college back in the 90s. Okay, so I rode with NWA. For those of you don't who don't know who NWA is, it's the N-word with attitudes. The N-word with the attitudes. So I used to roll with them, and you know, I was kind of on that F the police trip, you know, but I was young. I was a kid. I, you know, when you're young, you can't, you don't understand, you don't understand the world. You don't understand how the world operates, and so you know, you know, I was kind of young and I was rebellious, you know, and I was on this, you know, bl blaming other people for my problems, blaming a white man for my problems. I remember, I remember one night, I was at a uh, Alpha Phi Alpha party. Y'all know I'm an Alpha, and so we kicking it at the party, and I'm not gonna tell you who came and shot the party up. You might, you might know the guy. I'm not gonna put him on blast like that so we was having a Daisy Duke contest 
up there in uh, Youngstown. And so I'm an alpha, right? And so, and I hope some of my fraternity brothers is watching this because some of y'all be tripping, man. Y'all on this, you know, a lot of y'all on this black power thing, you know, putting your clenched fists up in the air and we're going to, you know, this is black power. We're going to take, you know, we hate the white man. We hate the police. Too old for this. Too old for this, man. So, so I remember back when I was in college, man, it, we had, so we was throwing a Daisy Duke party. And uh, some dude came and shot the party up. Some dude from the projects came and shot the party up. I'm not going to say who it was. I was pretty angry that, na that night. I was drunk. Came home, started talking to my father. He like, boy, what happened? I said, man, some dude just came and shot our party up. So I went off and all this stuff. And then, you know what? I, you know, I went left field with it, though. You know what I did? I started blaming the white man. I said, you know what? If it wasn't for slavery, slavery snowballed its way all the way to that party. And we're oppressed. You know, it all goes back to slavery. If it wasn't for slavery and all of these generational it had a general generational effect. One, it, it led, you know, po poverty was passed down to this generation. Then it was passed down to the next generation. Then it was passed down to the next generation. Poverty and oppression. And so I blamed the white man, and my father just simply said, "Well, no, son. The dude that shot the party is the one who is responsible for the shooting. And what it was, it has nothing to do with slavery. It has nothing to do with white oppression." And see, you you see black and white people getting along here. Black and white people getting along. We don't need sweet daddy Don Lemon and all of these old talking talking snake media personnel out here trying to divide us and conquer us. Everybody getting along with each other. You know what I'm saying? We don't need nobody to tell us that we're not getting along with each other. Everybody's getting along. Everybody, now we all probably got our little attitudes. I, I have a little attitude at times. You know, sometimes I don't want to be bothered. Some of y'all don't want to be bothered. So, you know, so let's just keep it 100, man. It, so, I'm encouraging you, if, if you one of those people, just, you know, you saying that you oppressed. I don't see anybody oppressed out here. I don't see nobody, I don't see anybody oppressed. I don't see anybody oppressed. Stop blaming the white man for your... I'm talking to my black brothers and sisters now. Stop blaming the white man for your problems. You know, and Reverend... I hope Reverend Al Sharpton is watching this because he's a very... He's an old, older... He's a foolish man. An old, foolish man. You know, so... Don't let... Don't let them have, don't let Marxism take over this country. They trying to divide us. They trying to conquer us. You know, they want to pit two people groups against each other. You know, pit the white people against the black people. And teach uh, critical race theory in our schools. Teach our kids that the white people are the oppressors and the black people are the one being oppressed. Man, later for that garbage, man. Look, we all need to grow up. And if you in my age group, if you 50 years old, and older, if you, I'm about to be 50 here in a few days. 50 years old, right? Now, if you, you my age, 50, 60, and 70, and 80, and you walking around with a victim's mentality, that's your own fault. That's your own fault. You are responsible for your mentality. I'm responsible for my mentality. I could choose to be a victor, I could choose to be a victim. Don't buy into that narrative. But if you want, if you just want to be a victim, go right ahead then. If that's what you want for your life. If that's what you want, you want to be a victim. All right? If that's what you want, I'm not incur I'm, That's my I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend for you to walk around with a victim's mentality because you give the the one who's uh, oppressing you the upper hand over you right off the rip. I would not walk around with a victim's mentality. I wouldn't give anybody the high ground over me like that. But if that's what you want to do, then go right ahead. Go ahead. Spend your, you know, we only get like 70 years down here on this earth. 80, maybe 90. 
And if you if you really bless, you might get a hundred. Uh oh, something going on over there. And you gonna walk around for seventy or eighty years with a victim mentality and then die? And then they drop. You know what's gonna happen? They're gonna put you in a box, right? Somebody gonna say a prayer for you, Reverend Do Dirty or whoever shows up. He preaches a sermon. They drop you in a box, and then you know. All right, so you spend most of your time worshiping your own personal skin color, right? And guess what? When you die, it all turns to dust. If you got white skin, it's going to turn to dust. If you got brown skin, it's going to turn to dust. And so you spent your whole entire life being oppressed, believing a lie. Now, do we got problems in America? Absolutely. But America is the best nation in the world. And if you don't feel that America is the best nation in the world, here's my advice. I would just leave. I used to teach school. I was a school teacher. And I didn't like, really like teaching. You know what I did? I didn't complain. I just, I resigned. I left. I said, man, you know, I don't think teaching is for me. I didn't stick around in the teacher's lounge and, and complain and complain about the, the kids and complain about the school system. I just said, man, this, this is not for me. I'm leaving. So if this nation is not for you, then it, leave because I'm tell you what I'm getting tired of all the complaining and the griping this is a blessed nation a prosperous nation now you know what the, our nation is the envy of the world New York City is the envy of the world and look at this and you got black and white people getting along with each other all getting along with each other we all getting along with each other so all right, man, but I'm going to go ahead and check out. I'm, I'm enjoying this time down here. I'm going to spend some time with God. And it was, oh, one thing, man, I just seen, it was it was a sad story earlier today. On my way over here, a lady got hit by a uh, car. She was on her scooter. She got hit by a car. And so I stuck around and I prayed. I was praying in tongues. I was praying in the spirit. And, uh, and I waited for a medical worker. It was a, a lot of us. It was a lot of us that gathered around. We all waited for a medical worker to come, uh, you know, take care of her, pick her up, take her to the hospital, whatever. And here's the beautiful thing. Black people were there. White people were there. Chinese people were there. It was a white lady. that. She, now, this was a black lady that got hit. A black lady got hit by another black dude. But it was, the, it was a white lady that showed up and she was a nurse she wasn't on duty but she showed up she she comforted her she took care of her and then it was another beautiful black lady there too helping out i think she was more like latino she had brown skin and then you have black people there and then you have white people there we was all so keep her in your prayer and she was scared she's talking about i don't want to die i don't want to die and all this you know so and i was and i and i got down on my knee and i started praying in tongues and she was talking about she was scared to die but it was there were people there to, to help her and comfort her and it was black people there white people there uh asian people we was all there to help her and so just keep her in your prayers all right so i'll give you another little glimpse of what's up this is what's up man that's me i don't know if you can see me they say New York City is the blue city, the Democrat city, so I left the Democrat party. I ain't rolling with them. I can't roll with the party of slavery, the party of the KKK, party of Jim Crow. Can't roll with the party of victimhood. Can't roll with the party of Karl Marx. That's not me. I'm out. I'm encouraging all my black brothers and sisters to leave the Democrat plantation. Have enough guts, like your boy Reg did, get up and walk out of the Democrat plantation. Because they own you, they own your vote. In in it, back in uh, slavery days, they own they owned us. The Democrat South owned us. And so, matter of fact, you know what? There would be no Re Republican Party if it wasn't for the Democrat Party. The Republican Party was created to stop the uh, to the uh, the uh, spread of slavery towards the, toward the Western territories. That's why the Republican Party was created to stop the Democrat Party from expanded slavery into the western ter uh, territory so there would have been no republican party if it wasn't for the democrat party republican party i believe was created in 1854 to stop the to abolish slavery that's why the republican party was created 
encouraging all my black brothers and sisters stop throwing stones at me stop shooting spitballs at me y'all get y'all this been going on long enough what seven or eight years now y'all been shooting spitballs at me on facebook youtube whatever talking trash joining in with all your friends just joining it just you know and then and then many of you ostracized me, kicked me out the cool club and all that stuff. But your boy Reg is still standing. And yes, I voted for Trump. And if he runs again, I'm voting for him again. And so I'm just putting that out there. Trump has been a blessing to Israel. And so and he's been a blessing to the church. And you know what? Black pastors, I hope you're watching this video. Because many of you encourage your congregation to go out and vote for Joe Biden. A racist. Jim Crow Joe, he was in favor of uh, Jim. Well, he was in he was in favor of segregation. He didn't want his white kids to, to uh, integrate with the black kids. But y'all went out and voted for Jim Crow Joe, right? And you probably feel pretty proud of, of yourself for doing that. And he's a racist. He hates America. He he's uh, making friends with our enemies, and he's making enemies with our friends, making friends with Iran and the pap and. Uh, the Palestinians giving them money, giving giving the Palestinians money, giving the Iranians money, so that they can use that money to attack Israel. Even after I've been trying to explain this for a long time, that God made a covenant with Abraham back there in the hot deserts of the Middle East 4,000 years ago. And the, I'm gonna tell you what: there's nothing that nobody can do to stop God from fulfilling His the covenant that He made with Abraham. Every square inch of land that God promised the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will come under Jewish control when Jesus Christ returns to set up his throne in the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus will rule on the throne of David from the city of Jerusalem. So there's nothing that old uh, Joe Biden could do about that. So don't. So I'm encouraging my black brothers and sisters to get away from that victim, that the victimhood mentality. If you roll it like that, I'm not going to roll with you no more. If, if you're going to be operating in a victimhood mentality, you know, I hate America, and I'm going to you know, keep bringing up slavery. We know slavery happened, man. I did a whole teaching on slavery. I went into the history of slavery. I went all the way back to, uh, I talked, to, I went, I did a com pretty thorough teaching on the history of slavery. It goes all the way back to almost to the beginning. The Egyptian Empire has slaves. Babylonian Empire has slaves. Medo-Persian Empire has slaves. Greek Empire has slaves. Uh, Ch China, they had an empire. They had slaves. Uh, and so you had Europeans en enslaving Europeans. The indigenous people enslaving other indigenous people. Africans enslaving Africans. And then here's the good one. Here's the kicker. You had the white European, or you had the black Africans enslaving white Europeans. So what are you gonna do about that? And then Africans are still enslaving each other on the continent of Africa right now. You got 700,000 slaves on the continent of Africa right now, and they're enslaved by other Africans. But we victims, right? We oppressed. All right, so go somewhere with that mess, you know. And if you're gonna keep on op running, operating in that type of mindset and that mentality. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna roll with you no more like that. Excuse me. I'm not operating like that, you know what I mean? Y'all already a lot of y'all many of you already kicked me out, you know. You ostracized me. You said I don't want nothing to do with Reggie no more because he voted for Trump. And I don't want anything to do with him because he, he kinda like shifted over to Republican. So if that's you, feel free to walk out. I love you, I'll keep praying for you. But I gotta do what I believe that God wants me to do. And uh, that's what I'm gonna continue to do. You black pastors, you need to step up and uh, stop encouraging your uh, congregations to go out there and vote for these old shady Democrats. You know, get some guts. You know, t you, you're going to take some few shots to the chin. Look what they did to me. But take some guts and stand up for what's right. Vote for candidates, which is primarily the Republican Party, that stand with Israel, that are against same-sex marriage, that are against abortion, that are, that are against Marxism. And, uh, and this against all of this victimhood stuff that they're trying to push on us. And then vote for a ca candidates that want to lower taxes. They want small government. You don't want big government. You want small government. So get some guts, man. Your boy Red, your, your boy Red is going to keep standing whether you choose not to stand. But here's, here's America. Here's New York. And here's me. All right, I got to go. Love you guys. God bless.